Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on neural networks of this machine learning course. This section gives a deeper understanding of what neural networks can do. First, let's reconsider a single neuron. And more simple, with a single input variable x and an output variable y tilde. The neuron takes a value of the variable x. This value is multiplied with the parameter w1. Then a bias term w0 is added. This sum determines the variable z of the neuron. It is used as input for the activation function sigma of z. Here we use a sigmoid activation function. So we can substitute the summation variable z into the functional relation of the sigmoid function. This gives 1 over 1 plus exponential function of minus w0 minus w1 times x. The activation function is directly used as output y tilde. So sigma of z equals y tilde. This model is equivalent to logistic regression. On the right side, three examples of the function y tilde depending on x are plotted. Here we use different random values for the model parameters w0 and w1. As we already know, the result is an S-shaped curve. Its x position can be adjusted by the parameter w0 and the slope of the transition from 0 to 1 is determined by w1. Now let's replace the sigmoid activation by the ReLU activation function. The sum v equals w0 plus w1 times x is used as input for the ReLU activation function. This gives the neuron's output y tilde equals the max value of 0 and w0 plus w1 times x. Examples of this function depending on x for random values for the parameters are shown on the right side. Similar to the sigmoid function, the parameters w0 and w1 can adjust the position on the x-axis and the slope of the ReLU function. If the slope is negative, the linear part of the ReLU function is on the left side. But note that the ReLU function is always positive, independent of the parameters and the values of x. From the single neuron, we come to more complex neural networks by putting neurons together. Here, we consider two neurons parallel to each other in a hidden layer labeled by number 2. We use ReLU activations for these neurons. The outputs of these neurons are aggregated by an output neuron with a linear activation function. This neural network takes a single input variable x and returns a single output y tilde. The output of the first neuron of layer number 2 is given by a ReLU function which takes the scaled input variable x with the parameters w11 of layer 2 added by a bias term w01 of layer 2. So we have y1 of layer 2 equals the max value of 0 and w01 of layer 2 plus w11 of layer 2 times x. Similarly, for the second neuron of this layer, we have an output of y2 of layer 2 equals the max value of 0 and w02 of layer 2 plus w12 of layer 2 times x. The output neuron takes both of these variables, 
y1 of layer 2 and y2 of layer 2. It scales them individually by the parameters w11 of layer 1 and w21 of layer 1. And finally adds a bias term w01 of layer 1. This is the output y tilde of the neural network. This is because the summation d1 has a linear activation function. On the right side, we can see two examples for the resulting functions with random values for the parameters. The functions are not limited to positive values because of the linear combination of the output neuron. This linear combination scales two ReLU functions which are shifted and scaled individually by their own parameters. Each ReLU function has a kink at a certain position on the x-axis. This kink is determined by the parameters of layer number 2. Two ReLU functions lead to two different kinks. This is why the resulting functions have two edges each, or in other words, they are composed of three line segments. We can stack more neurons into our hidden layer number two. Here we have capital L neurons. For example, we can choose capital L is equal to 10. On the right side, two output functions y tilde depending on x for random values of the parameters are sketched. For two neurons, we had two edges in the resulting output function because of the two neurons. If we take 10 neurons, we have 10 edges because we can combine 10 ReLU functions linearly by the output neuron. In other words, the resulting function has 11 line segments. A neural network with the most common ReLU activation in a hidden layer and the linear activation as output can be used for regression tasks. Such a neural network will approximate the training data by line segments. This is called a piecewise linear regression. The number of neurons determines the number of line segments. The previous example considers a single hidden layer of neurons aggregated by an output neuron. This is a so-called multilayer perceptron. This is because in addition to the output layer, it has a hidden layer. However, we can stack multiple hidden layers together to form even deeper neural networks. The advantage of multiple hidden layers is that layers closer to the output can reuse structures of previous layers. These structures were aggregated by several activation functions such as the ReLU activation function. A previous neuron outputs a structure such as the triangle function shown at the left neuron on the right side. All neurons in the next layer can reuse this structure and shift it along the x-axis. An output neuron on the right side could aggregate these shifted triangle functions and give back a repeating structure. In theory, even with a single hidden neuron layer, arbitrary functional relations, such as the repeated triangle, can be created. This is true for an infinite or at least a sufficient number of neurons. However, multiple hidden layers can easily reuse such structures and are consequently easier to fit to data if the data shows recurring structures. In a lot of real-world examples, we have such recurring structures. Therefore, deep neural networks with multiple hidden layers 
can be very advantageous. So far, we considered a single input variable x. Now, let's take a look on a neuron which takes two input variables x1 and x2. This neuron still gives back an output y tilde. So, the neuron is a function y tilde depending on x1 and x2. Both variables are scaled by individual multiplicative parameters w1 and w2. Further, the summation adds a bias w0. If we consider a ReLU activation, the output y tilde is equal to the max value of 0 and the summation v. The summation v is w0 plus w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2. An example for this function with random parameters is shown on the right side. The function consists of two planes with a line intersection determined by the parameters. From the single neuron, we can come to more complex neural networks. Here, we consider a network with two neurons in the hidden layer with ReLU activation functions. The outputs of these neurons are aggregated by an output neuron. This output neuron uses a linear activation function. The neural network takes two input variables, x1 and x2, and outputs the variable y tilde. Similar to the one-dimensional input examples, we can write the functional relation as shown on the lower left. The output combines two ReLU functions, which themselves have a linear summation as argument. An example for the output y tilde for random parameters is shown on the right side. The resulting function has now four plane segments with four intersecting lines because of the two two-dimensional ReLU functions and the hidden layer. Taking more neurons into the hidden layer will give more complex structures. But still, they are composed of piecewise linear segments. Here, two examples with 50 neurons are shown. With more neurons, more complex functional relations can be approximated by a neural network. We can do similar considerations for different activation functions. Here, we used a sigmoid activation instead of ReLU. On the left side, the result for two neurons is sketched. So the network gives two two-dimensional sigmoid functions. On the right side, we have 50 neurons. Note that the output for a lot of neurons looks more similar to the output with ReLU activation functions. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe the channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment down below. And thanks again for listening. See you in the next section.